Good morning. I'm Jim. Welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk a little bit, not so much about cameras, but I have a uh, camera here that I'm going to be doing some service on. And I want to talk very specifically about battery compartments. Uh, because uh, so many times with these uh, old cameras, the battery part compartments are stuck. And so often I see the compartment is damaged as a result of people trying to get them open. So I want to talk about how we open things. So are these things, what are the appropriate methods to avoid damage? So first of all, let's talk about what causes them to get stuck. Uh, commonly, two sources. One is uh, somebody uh, uh, securing them and just tightening down too tight. Uh, is very common, but also the batteries inside can explode and the contents, the residue, gets into the threads and dries. So uh, those are the most common causes. The, uh, the, uh, the slot on the battery compartment itself, if you have a look on this one, it's not too bad, but a lot of times these, uh, these slots are damaged and gouged because people are using a screwdriver to open them and uh, you don't want to do that we're going to talk about how how to open them properly now when you're examining the battery compartment if you see any uh, uh, kind of a whitish greenish residue around the outside edge that's because the battery inside has exploded and one of the easy ways to deal with that is common household vinegar and a uh, cotton bud or, uh, or a cotton tipped applicator. Just uh, soak the applicator into the vinegar and just lay vinegar into those threads and let it soak in and uh, you'll notice when it comes into contact with that material it will foam up and it will dissolve it quite effectively. So uh, just uh, put a, a liberal amount of vinegar, not so much that you're getting it into the body of the camera, but just to fill that th the channel, the threads around the outside of that compartment, and just let that soak. Then uh, once that's done, dry it off, and you can uh, attempt to open it. Now let's talk a little bit about opening them. So, as I said earlier, so commonly these uh, this slot is gouged and these are typically brass or soft metal so it's really easy to damage them. People get in there with a screwdriver, they put it in there and they find it doesn't quite grip and they twist and twist and then uh, gouge the heck out of the edge of that channel. Because the screwdriver is square, that channel is not. Typically, uh, most uh, Japanese-made cameras, the channel is actually designed for a 5 yen Japanese coin. Now, this isn't a 5 yen. This is actually a 1 sen Japanese coin, but it does fit quite nicely. And uh, you may not have one, and uh, probably don't. So, there are other coins that we can use. I can use a Canadian quarter, will work quite effectively. Uh, I've got a uh, Canadian nickel. Canadian penny, if you still have uh, pennies around, they will work, but they're a little bit small and can be, uh, if that's stuck at all, it's hard to get any leverage. In fact, even with a larger coin, larger coin helps with leverage, but if that's really stuck, it uh, may present a challenge. So I will use this. But Jim, you just told us not to use a screwdriver. This is not a typical screwdriver. If you have a look at the end, if you can see that, here's a regular screwdriver. This one was a regular screwdriver, but I've put it on a grinder and I've ground off the edge. So it's the same radius as a coin. And that lets me get in there and get more leverage so I can pop that battery out without damaging the slot. And it's easy to make. Just go to a home store, get, uh, get any cheap little stubby screwdriver and a few seconds on a, uh, on a grinding stone and you've got a nice tool for that purpose. Okay, once you've got the uh, compartment open, 
Uh, we're going to pop out the battery. The battery in most cases is going to be toast. And uh, we're going to have a look inside. And what you may see is more of that residue. Down here on the uh, bottom you see those springs. If you see that residue on the springs, again take your moist cotton tipped applicator moistened with vinegar don't uh, not liberal don't put in uh, a lot of it but just take the moist applicator put it on to the that little bit of uh, corrosion you'll see it foam up quite nicely and simply dissolve then take the dry end and dry it off any other corrosion in there you can clean up very nicely with vinegar now in some cases you may find the uh, the springs are pitted or damaged. You also want to check the inside of the cap as well. So uh, that uh, this one you can see is uh, is looking a little bit dirty. That might need a little bit of cleaning. You want good contacts on both sides. So uh, try cleaning it with your cotton bud and uh, a little bit of vinegar. If it's uh, still not looking shiny, it's not coming uh, very clean, I have another tool that I've made. And I've taken a doweling, a little bit of uh, 800 grit sandpaper, basically almost like an emery cloth, and a, a hole punch, and I punch out these little circles. And then with some glue, I adhere the, uh, the sandpaper to the end of the doweling and now I can get in here and I can clean the points off on the uh, um, on the uh, battery compartment. Okay, so that's an easy little tool to make. Now when you're putting in batteries, so this camera um, this is a uh, Pentax ME. It uses regular uh, LR44s, modern LR44 batteries. So uh, I would just get a new set of uh, LR44s and pop those in. Make sure you orient, it, orient them cor correctly. When you're taking the old batteries out, take a look at how they, uh, they went in. You can also uh, often see on the inside of the battery chamber. It'll give you some indication as to which end of the battery goes up. And uh, watch the orientation on the batteries as to uh, which end is positive and negative. Make sure they go in properly. If you can't see any orientation there, you can always download the manual online. Just do a search on your camera, uh, camera model with the word manual, and you'll find it. And uh, uh, just make sure the battery's going the proper way. Now, it becomes more challenging when you have an old camera, such as this one. This old Pentax Spotmatic. It has, uh, it takes a very different type of battery. And uh, they're 1.3 volt cells, which are no longer produced anymore. So uh, how do you use those? Well, you got uh, you can always, fortunately with these old mechanical cameras, you can use them without a, without a battery. You just use an external meter or use the Sunny 16 rule. But if you do want to put a battery in there, there are options. You can use battery adapters. This is a uh, purchased brass battery adapter. And uh, a common battery, like the LR44, fits in there. And then that will fit in the camera. That's one option. Uh, I 3D print, my, I, I use a lot of these things, so I 3D print my own battery adapters. And uh, same thing, they work quite well. Now, when you're putting a 1.5 volt battery into a camera that's designed for a 1.3 volt cell, that can cause you some, might cause you some issues. If you shoot primarily black and white film, don't worry about it. The, uh, the difference in voltage between the two will not make a significant difference on your images. The latitude of black and white film is wide enough that uh, it will handle it quite nicely. Uh, most color negative films, same thing. It's, uh, it's got sufficient latitude to be able to handle that. But if you shoot transparency film like Ektachrome, then that is really 
really requires accurate exposure and the exposure on your camera uh, that your meter is is going to be off slightly so there's a couple options you can do there you could use your um, uh, take your camera outside and uh, you could um, use a uh, another camera with a good meter uh, or following the sunny 16 rule and if you don't know what that is do a quick search i'm not going to go into it here but it's a, it's a quick and easy way to shoot a camera without a meter so um, either way you can uh, get an accurate me meter reading outside with another camera and then by changing the ISO, so let's say you're putting in 400 ISO film, by changing it to 450, 500, or uh, 350, 300, you can change the meter so the meter reads the same as the good camera. And at that point, just make a note from now on, anytime you put in 450 ISO film, you need to set the, uh, uh, the ISO on the camera to 350 to compensate for that. So that's, uh, that's one option. Another option is to um, use a battery adapter that actually has a resistor incorporated into it to lower the voltage. So when you put in a 1.5 volt cell, you put that in the camera, it actually comes out as 1.3 volt. And those, those uh, adapters are readily available on, uh, on eBay. The... Um, a uh, third option you can do is to actually send the camera in uh, to a repair facility and have them adjust the camera. They'll take the top off and put a resistor in series with the, uh, the battery compartment so that it drops the voltage of your 1.5 volt cell down to 1.3 volt. So uh, a few different options there. I shoot a lot of black and white, mostly black and white film, so I don't worry about it. I uh, just put in 1.5 volt, and it does me just fine. Now, once you've got your new, uh, your fresh batteries inserted, and you're putting the uh, the cap back on, using our modified screwdriver, especially using the modified screwdriver, don't get carried away. That's, this does not have to be super tight. If you think of using with a coin, just finger tight is all that's required. Nothing more than that. And once you've done that, test your camera and make sure that the uh, meter is working. If it's, uh, if it's not working, check those contacts and also check your batteries and make sure that the batteries you put in are actually good ones. So I hope that helps on uh, dealing with camera battery compartments. Any questions, send me a, send me a message, post a comment, and um, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.